in a validation study of the first FDA-cleared AI-based tool for pathology diagnosis, the pathologists that were using the tool were seven percentage points better than the pathologists who were not using the tool. The team pathologist plus AI outperformed both the pathologist alone and the AI alone. This is an amazing example, but what are the applications of AI in pathology? What can AI be used for in pathology other than primary diagnosis? Not so long ago, AI in pathology was only associated with images, image analysis, computer vision applications. This was where everybody was trying to use AI. But recently, with the boom of large language models, AI can also be applied to pathology text. And we have a lot of text. Reports, scientific literature, clinical trial results, to name just a few. So I will divide the applications into three categories, image analysis, natural language processing, and the combination of the two. The first image analysis application is quantifying something in the image, counting nuclei, delineating area and measuring it, Things that are relatively simple that sometimes pathologists are being asked to do manually, like count CHI-67 positive nuclei in a field of view or in several fields of view. AI can do it now on images, not only on whole slide images, but also on static images, on the images you can actually use AI on the images from your microscope camera. You don't need whole slide images for this. The second image analysis application is computer-aided diagnostics. Like the example I gave you in the introduction, PageAI was the first company that got an AI-based algorithm cleared by the FDA to help with cancer diagnostic. And this algorithm points out the suspicious areas in the image, and the pathologist then later goes in and confirms whether this area is malignant or not. And it turns out that with the AI tool, pathologists are more accurate and faster. Another trend in the pathology image analysis world is predicting molecular properties of the tissue from the image. Models are being created that are being fed the image data and the molecular data matched together, and the models can predict mutation status of the sample based on the image. And this actually is already being used in the clinic. There was a case report published by Dr. Barlitz Weisengrin in Israel about the use of AI molecular analysis tool to assist in rapid treatment decisions in lung cancer. And what happened here, a model, an image analysis model was used to predict an EGFR mutation in the lung tissue and instead of sending the sample for next-gen sequencing, a rapid PCR for confirmation could be done. The treatment started a lot faster, and the cost of the diagnostic procedure was lower. Another application of predicting molecular properties of tissue are so-called virtual stains, if we're talking about immunohistochemistry. We can do virtual stains of special stains, which are predictions of chemical properties of the tissue, because special stains are chemical stains, and IHC stains are actually showing the molecules in the tissue. So predicting IHC from an image is also molecular prediction. So this is what we can do with images and AI in pathology. What can we do with text? Well, here the technology called natural language processing is going to be used. So ChatGPT and its cousins, Llama, Llama2, and all the other large language models can be applied here. One pretty low-hanging fruit and a simple application is speech to text. Pathologists are used to dictating everything on their recording devices and it used to be transcribed by human transcribers. Now you can train AI to recognize the pathologist's voice, to learn their vocabulary, their ways of saying the words, and it can be automatically transcribed. Text to speech. Another potential application is creating structured reports based on the verbal pathology description of the case. So the AI can actually populate templates of structured reporting based on what the pathologist is dictating while reviewing the case. 
Another application of large language models would be so-called smart search. What do I mean by smart search? Answering questions about conditions, certain patients, based on the records present in the institution database, be it a hospital, a university, a company. We could ask a question about the case a project we're working on and receive information based on what has already been previously done in the company. And here the skeptics are going to ask, but what about the hallucination? How can we know that AI is going to give us the right answer, that it's only going to base answer on the database that we want it to base the answers on? So here the technology used for this is called RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation which basically pairs the language capacities of the large language models, the creative, the generative language capacities, with a solid database and makes this large language model also reference where they took this information so that it can be double-checked if necessary. So we discussed the image analysis part, the large language model part. Can we merge them? Well, there are initiatives that are doing exactly that. Recently, I visited a, a conference, the annual meeting of the ACVP, American College of Veterinary Pathologists, and I listened to a fascinating presentation how a major pharmaceutical company is trying to merge the image analysis AI capabilities with the language model capabilities and their retrieval augmented generation to accelerate drug development. And this is where I predict all the AI capabilities of pathology are gonna merge pretty soon because drug development is a competitive industry and the benefit of being fast there is huge for the patients. Thank you so much for listening. If you are just starting your digital pathology and computational pathology journey, I have something for you. I wrote a book, Digital Pathology One-on-One, -on -one, that is going to accelerate your learning curve and make it a lot less steep if you're just starting in digital pathology. I have the free PDF version linked in the description below. So go ahead, grab it, and jumpstart your digital pathology train blazing journey. And I talk to you in the next episode.